Hello and welcome to this third video on threat modeling with Iris Risk. In this video, we're going to look at the third question in the four question framework. What are we going to do about it? So if we look at the project that we created in the first two videos, we talked about um, how we can create the architectural diagram. Uh, we automatically identify the threats that are associated with the, the architecture of our system. In this video, we're going to look at the controls that we want to apply in order to mitigate the threats. Automatically, based on the rules that we've got defined in the system, we've identified particular controls that need to be implemented. In this case, there are two. We've also identified particular controls that are required. In this case, we have 16, uh, and there may be more that we as security as engineering or security champions um, would want the project to implement in order to make the system more secure. And that would be based on reviewing the recommended controls, those controls which are uh, currently identified as nice to have. So how do we do that? So typically we do that through the threat view. So you can see the, the controls which you have identified already through the through the diagramming phase as required as implemented and those which are required. Um, through the color coding associated with the risk response and what we uh, intend to deploy in terms of countermeasures. But how do we identify additional controls that are required? So obviously we can do that manually. We can go through and we can review each control individually and decide which is relevant. But as you can see, our controls are also mapped to particular standards. And that's another way we can um, very quickly identify those controls which are relevant to us based on the standard or the compliance needs of our organization or our project. So, as I said, we could just go through and, autom and manually change each control. Or we can go in and we can identify the controls which are relevant to, in this case, this 853. And we can simply apply that standard and it goes away and it identifies the controls which are mapped to that standard and then identifies which ones are required and as you can see through the ui we've now got several uh, threats which will be partially or fully mitigated just by applying in this 853 and we can go through and if there are multiple standards we can say well we need to be asvs level two and again another 24 countermeasures that would be appropriate for that compliance requirement. And again, we've now got a much um, more healthy project threats that are uh, mitigated. So that's fairly straightforward, fairly easy to, to do. So ultimately, as part of that review phase, we want to be able to then take those controls and deliver them to our engineering team. Now, in collaboration, we could just access the uh, threat modeling tool and we can then look at the controls so if we are interested in our web application server then we can see all of the controls which relate to that and if we are only interested in the required controls we can filter that down and again we've got a, a view of what controls are required now um, if we wanted to prioritize things logically we can say well really we want to look at the highs the mediums the lows in that order we don't want to do everything in one in one go so again, we could filter down and just look at a priority and say, well, the very highs, these are our priorities. This is we want what we want engineering to deliver now. So how do we get engineering to deliver a more secure system? They could obviously um, access the, the platform and consume the controls from this point, but it'd be much easier if they could consume them within the tech, the tech, tech stack that they're using uh, natively. So we provide an integration into issue tracking, which allows your engineers to um, view the threats. So we can do it on an individual basis. Again, um, open up an issue, uh, an issue in your chosen issue tracking system. This happens to be Azure DevOps. Um, there we go, that's that, uh, that particular ticket. Um, so that's just one at a time. We can also select several controls at once and we can perform bulk actions and that will allow us to create tickets for those particular issues or depending on how many how many we want to apply to we could actually just um, create issues for all of our requirements and that would uh, bulk upload 
83 tickets for our um, for our project. We'll not do that just for this uh, for purpose of this. So that gives us sight um, traceability from our threat model into our issue tracking engineering backlogs. So from a threat modeling perspective, we can actually see what's going on. 